Hey everyone, welcome back to LoFi Startup. Thanks to everyone for subscribing and sticking around. Today, what I'm gonna be doing is showing you guys how you can use retool workflows to actually set up a backend for your mini projects. Those of you who know retool workflows, you're probably more familiar with using them for cron jobs, ETL tasks, and things like that. But what I found is because you can set them up as webhooks, they can be used for many other use cases, like building a backend, for example. So let's get into it. Okay, so I'm first gonna show you the project that I made, and then we'll dive into each little endpoint that I built with retool workflows. Okay, so the project's called Emoji Wall. You can go ahead and find it at emojiwall.fun. And basically how it works is you enter in your email address and you get a secret key. And with that secret key, you can basically create an API post request that sends an emoji to this wall. So I have a bunch of people who have made their little emojis and you can also add a link. So if you wanna to link to your GitHub or your personal project or your website or whatever you want, you can also add that here. Okay, so I've entered my email. I'm gonna click get secret key. That's gonna go ahead and send me an email. Now, if I check in my inbox, you'll see I got a little email from Emoji Wall, and here's my little secret key. Now, what I need to do is actually make the post request to put myself on the wall. Over here, I can view the API docs. So here are my super long API docs. I've got this request URL, so you can use whatever your preferred method is to submit a post request. I'm just gonna use Postman. You can use curl in the terminal or whatever you want. I'm gonna set this up as a post request. Copy this base URL. Stick it in here. It looks like I need some headers. I'll grab these two. Set up these headers over here. Application JSON content type. Stick that in there. Okay, let's have a look at the body. So I'm just gonna set this as raw JSON. Looks like I can add my unique emoji, my name, some URL, and then my secret key. So let me go ahead and first grab my secret key from that email from earlier. Go ahead back to Postman. Stick that key in. I'm gonna choose this one. My name's Jed. Here's my website, I'm gonna get rid of these comments. Cool, so let me send that post request. Okay, and I got a response, successfully added emoji. So let's go check the wall. Let's give this page a refresh. And here I am, here's my little emoji. And if I click on this link, it takes me to my personal website. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay, so now that you've seen a rundown of how the project works, I'm gonna show you piece by piece all the different endpoints I used to make it all come together. Okay, so the first endpoint I built was the one that actually sends the secret key and a link to the API docs. So what I've done is I've set up a workflow called send API docs. So for my start trigger, the first thing I did was I set it up as a webhook, which basically sort of makes it as an endpoint. You can also set up workflows to be cron jobs, like on a scheduler, but for this example, just setting it up as a webhook. And then for the webhook, I'm adding that email field in the JSON object. Okay, so this is how the workflow goes. So first, there's this very, very trivial input validation. It just checks that the email is not an empty string. It's probably a much better way of doing this, um, but I just didn't do it on the front end. So if the email is empty, returns, please enter an email. Next thing I'm doing is I'm hitting this Kickbox API. Pretty cool free API, basically. You can stick in any email address and very quickly it just basically returns whether it's like a fake or disposable email, which is quite nice for preventing against spam and things like that. So I hit the Kickbox API, basically then run a check whether the email is disposable or not. If it's disposable, I just return, you can't fool me, use a real email please. Right, so if your email isn't disposable, I go ahead and add you to the DB. So. What's cool about Retool is that it has a whole DB setup as well. So here's a little example of how the DB record looks. So basically what I first do is I select from that table and I first check whether that email exists in the table. And if the email already exists, I return email already used because I don't want duplicate emails in my DB. If the email doesn't exist, I go ahead and insert that record. Basically just the email, this Boolean, whether I've joined or not, and then a unique user ID. Okay, so after I've inserted that record, the next thing I'm gonna do is grab that email again and go ahead and send the email. What I do is I do this really random thing where I go and get all the emojis that are currently from Unicode. And then what I do is I basically count the length of that array to get the unique amount of emojis available right now. And that's just for the silly part of the email where I basically pop that in over here dynamically and say, you're one of the limited 1,859 members, which is basically just the number of available emojis on Unicode that can potentially be used. So yeah, all of that stuff gets dynamically added to this query, which hits the Brevo API, which I think is the rebranded version of Send in Blue, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, it was just 
a free sort of trial email service that I could use given the current volumes. Retool also has an email service, but it adds the sent by Retool branding at the bottom, which I didn't want for this use case. And that's that. After it sends the email successfully, we get that API response sent secret key, which we see coming through in the toast on the front end. Okay, so you've seen the endpoint now that sends the email with the secret key and the API docs. Next up, I'm gonna show you the workflow that actually posts the emoji to the wall. So this is the workflow called create new emoji. And this again is another webhook with a JSON body. Basically the first thing we do is we go ahead and grab all of our members and we check whether the UUID or the key exists in the members table. So that's just a little bit of JavaScript here to check that. And then what we do is basically return secret key invalid if the UUID doesn't exist in the members table. Then if the UUID does exist, we continue getting that member from the table where that UUID equals the secret key. Then we check whether that member's already joined the wall. And that's where I'm using that boolean so we check whether joined is true if joined is not true we know that the member hasn't actually submitted an emoji to the wall yet and if they've already joined the wall we just return that again in a response okay so if they haven't joined the wall we then go and check whether the emoji that they've submitted in the request is actually valid and this is just some javascript regex which i probably pulled off chat gbt to basically check whether it's a valid emoji using some extended pictographic regex vibes over here I don't fully understand, but kind of works. If that fails, again, we return invalid emoji. Sorry, it's not part of the Unicode emojis. If it's successful, we then go grab all of our emojis from a different table and check whether that emoji has already been used by a member. That table looks like this. So this is everyone who's currently on the wall. We go ahead and fetch everything on here and we go and cross check the emoji that came through from the post request against all the emojis in this column. And that bit of JS does that here. Then again, if that fails, we return this emoji already exists on the wall. Please try again with a different one. Or if it's successful, we go ahead and insert the new emoji into that emoji table and then update the members table by setting join to true. And yeah, we then return successfully added emoji. Okay, so we've seen the workflow that sends the email. We've seen the second workflow that puts the emoji on the wall. Now, finally, I'm just gonna show you the simple workflow that gets all the emojis for the front end. Okay, so here's the front end project. Super simple, just vanilla JS, HTML, CSS. I don't really use frameworks. I haven't really spent much time like getting good at frameworks like React and things like that. So when I build simple projects, I kind of just stick with the classic HTML, CSS, vanilla JS stuff. So basically, I'm just going to show you that endpoint where we fetch in the emojis. So again, we just hit a retool workflow endpoint. And this time, basically, it's kind of just like a get request. And then I just dynamically map the response from that request to some HTML that renders in this div section over here. That's how we get all this dynamic content on the front end. And yeah, this is the workflow. It's basically three blocks, very, very simple. Just again, a start trigger as a webhook, a simple DB request to get all the emojis. And then in the response, we just pass through the data from this query over here. So yeah, super simple get request type endpoint built with retool workflows. And yeah, so when we refresh this page, basically when that little emoji is spinning, it's hitting that get request and dynamically mapping all the data it's getting from that retool workflows response to the front end. That's it, that's all. Three workflows to basically build the entire back end of this little project that I built. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying the content. Very excited to make another video next week and I'll see you then.